Hello and welcome to another customer journey. In this particular journey, we're going to be taking a look at SQL Data Generator and Data Masker. When to use synthesized data versus masked or de-identified data. My name is Chris Unwin and I'm one of the solutions architects at Redgate Software. I'm also a massive fan of data security. So a quick agenda for today's session then. We're going to be taking a look at synthetic data and de-identified data, where the two are beneficial, but certainly where they have their own specific use cases. We're going to take a look at the solution components offered by Redgate to provide this level of data. And then we'll also see an example of data generation and masking in action. But first, let's start off with a breakdown. So for synthesized data, this is generated from scratch every time. Every single column receives data. We are generating brand new rows with all of the information we need. And you can generate as much as you like, generally a number of rows or the amount of time, for instance. And you do so by configuring certain generators per column. Now, this doesn't retain the statistics, but just allows you to generate more meaningful values into your target tables. Now, because of that, it's great for development because it's very quick and easy to get up and running with. Now, de-identified data, slightly different. When we de-identify or we mask data, we overwrite existing data statically. Only specific columns, ones that you have chosen, are actually changed as part of the process, allowing us to retain other columns as part of that process. If you're not inserting any new rows or deleting any rows, you can keep the number of rows consistent and also retain distributions across different columns. This allows us to retain the look and feel of production-like data, and as such, is great for development and testing. Now, I've said great for development in two ways there, and they're very different ways, but let's take a look at an example of the data we might see for data synthesis and data de-identification. Over on the left, we have a production value there. So we have ID one, name Chris, date of birth, 16th of October, 1991. Now, we have an option to either just append newly generated rows to the end of that set. So end off with Chris and generate Joan, Phil and Mavis. Or we can truncate the table first and just generate a brand new set of data. Obviously, two completely different use cases. We might just need to add additional data. So you could do this as part of an automated schedule to represent the behavior of an application. Um, or you could truncate it and generate fresh data for testing purposes. Now with the de-identified data, instead of generating those brand new rows entirely, all we're doing is changing some of the values that exist there already. In this case, the ID, the key, was non-sensitive and therefore we didn't need to change it in any way. So we've retained the one. Chris, however, is a sensitive piece of information that we don't want existing in our non-production environments. So we have replaced it with Steve. We then also have the date of birth. And as you can see, instead of generating brand new dates of birth, that are all over the place, 2001, 1976, 1999, within a tolerance that we set for a generator, what we've actually done is varied the date ever so slightly, in fact, minus a few days, such that the date of birth itself is no longer tied to that initial individual in our table, but rather is actually different, is changed, is the 30th of September now. But the benefit to this is that the bell curve, the distribution of birth dates that we may have in that table is generally retained by the masking process. That way we can carry out some analysis over the data set if we so wish. Now for some use cases for talking about synthesized data specifically, it is great for load testing and scaling. 
So if you're trying to represent how the application loads data to the back end on a regular schedule, there's nothing stopping you from actually taking something uh, to generate data and generating a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand rows every minute, every hour, every day. It really is up to you and you can then simulate that. You could also simulate a whole load. So you could generate millions and millions of rows by leaving the generator going and seeing how well your database environment scales. Perhaps you've just made some changes in development and you want to see what some data would look like in your new table or within the new constraints of the table you've been changing. Well, of course, we can fire open the generators to actually give us some information and we're ready to go. It is fast and it is flexible data. It's very easy to configure, meaning we can get up and running right away, generating some of these rows. Now, of course, to do this, we would use Redgate's SQL Data Generator, and that would allow us to generate all of the different rows that we may need for testing in our databases. Now, what about de-identification or de-identified or masked data? Well, the purpose of this data is to give us something in a non-production environment, something that we can use for development, for testing, for analytics, but to protect personally identifiable information. Now, when it comes to testing against production databases, it's very common to find copies of sensitive information in lower environments like dev or test. With data masking, we can take non-useful sensitive values like names, email addresses, street addresses, and we can actually mask those, change them to something realistic and indicative of production, retaining a spread, retaining a dynamic uh, that exists purely within your production system so that your development and testing work is actually done to a higher quality because it is tested against something that is more like production, but sensitive values are protected either in line with company or legis legislative com compliance. And that could be complying with any piece of legislation like POPIA in South Africa, the GDPR in Europe, HIPAA, SOX, the California Consumer Privacy Act in the US. There's obviously a lot of different pieces of legislation we may wish to comply with. Now, fortunately, this could be used for any purpose from developing and delivering dev databases to providing third parties with copies of that data as well. Because we're preserving certain spreads, distributions and formats of data, we can also use it for running statistical analysis or, of course, gaining additional business insight and perhaps analyzing, identifying trends, and of course, bug hunting as well. Of course, to mask data then, we would use Redgate Data Masker, and this would allow us to sanitize any sensitive information for non-production workflows. So let's actually see these solutions in action. So right here, I have two tables, uh, both of which exist in my DM database. Now, the set on the left is an existing production set of data that I would like to de-identify for the purposes of non-production. And over in the right, the same table, I would like to just generate some random values in to simulate multiple customers signing up to my new application. Now, let's start off with data synthesis, data generation, and we'll jump over into SQL Data Generator from Redgate. Now, this is a very straightforward, very ingeniously simple tool that allows us to very quickly and easily pick the tables that we would like to generate information into, pick the columns, and then configure different sets of data and actually choose where we would like this information to come from to make it look a bit more realistic. Fortunately, it does maintain those primary and foreign key relationships as well. So if it's server assigned or links to other tables, don't worry, it will handle all of that. The key is you open up Data Generator and you can be quickly and easily prepared and up and running with generated data in no time at all. 
Now we've configured a number of sets for DM customer two, the DM customer two table, and we're just generating some IDs, some names, some company names, etc. And we can hit generate data. So I've chosen specifically a thousand rows and I've been able to generate that in less than a second. So let's jump back into SSMS and see what set we have ended up with. So now you can see here we've ended up with a set of IDs, in this case customer IDs, first names, last names, etc, company names. And it does look a bit like the original data, but it is also a lot of block text. So there are certain elements to this data that just aren't realistic and aren't representative of production. The production table only has 100 rows in it. For the newly generated table, I've generated 1,000 rows, again, just for a dev test workflow. We could also invoke this via the command line to, again, run this on a schedule and simulate the load of an application, or indeed even call it during a continuous integration phase. And that would allow us to run some tests with some realistic data in the database. But it's not reliable, it's not dependable for statistics, for analysis, or indeed for a true vision of exactly how production looks and operates. Now, on the other hand, if we were to try and de-identify that existing set of data, that is where we can use something like Data Masker for SQL Server. Data Masker is a static, random masking tool that allows us to achieve a realistic looking set whilst still preserving that statistical spread for analysis purposes, for development. Now, Data Masker itself also has a number of useful um, links with other capabilities within the Redgate stack, allowing us to auto-generate values from our data catalog, for instance, or indeed to mask single copies of databases that we can then use to virtualize and spin up cloned databases for. Now this would allow us to create a number of dev and test databases for developers, which we can then spin up at the drop of a hat. The good thing is, it wouldn't actually require us to move any sensitive information back, but would allow us to completely sanitize and protect all of our personally identifiable information, thereby giving us a nice realistic set that we can pull up and rip down at any point in time whilst protecting our customers. Now, beforehand, we had Francesco Racopo, Donaldo Londner, we had a set of company names. We do B2C and B2B. That could be important for our analysis. And if I rerun this set, we now have Bert and Tawana. We have still no company names for them. We've preserved that spread of values, that distribution. We've preserved our demographic and we have nice realistic values here like uh, at Ridgeling or at Handicapped or at para parabiotic.example basically just random words appended with reserved second level domains. We can also see that we have realistic addresses as well. You can see we have a Berkshire region up here, followed by a Berkshire postcode as well. So if we need values to be correlated, then we can do so. It's very easy to generate exactly what we need depending on the purpose. And fortunately, using SQL Data Generator for our more basic data generation requirements, load testing, some ad hoc testing in development or testing in uh, our continuous integration phase, it's absolutely perfect. But for the protection of personally, identi personal, personally identifiable information uh, that we will ultimately consume in other workflows through third parties or into dev test, that is when we can use data de-identification. So some resources then, you will find these slides available at that particular link. You can also go and check out both Data Masker and SQL Data Generator on the Redgate website under products. 
and of course for further reading and further videos on both data generation and of course data de-identification you can find out a bit more on the Redgate hub where you'll find product articles and also Redgate University walking you through these similar examples and helping you get the most out of your data generation or data de-identification needs. Thank you for stopping by.